Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Dry Down, where we aspire to enhance and elevate our olfactory sensory experiences through the different faucets, aromas, and nuances from scent cigars to wines. I am your host, Chris. Welcome to the experience. Today, we're going to do a tandem review of one of my favorite new daily driver smokes, which is a CAO Pilon, and one of my favorite four season incense fragrances done by the House of Zirzhov for their 1861 collection, Zephyro. If this sounds like the type of content you think you'll enjoy, pull up a seat, pour a glass, and let's enhance. So everyone, let's get into the scent profile first. As I said, this is Zirzhov Subcollection XJ Series 1861, and this is the Zephyro perfume, which is one of the most Beautiful incense fragrances that I think you can find on the market today. This is a ambery aromatic Woody fresh spiced herbaceous and a slightly floral touch With a very Nuanced wine must accord over spices and this for me is a fragrance it pays homage to uh, the Italian style of fragrance making it is a fragrance with both an instant magnetism and a mysterious contrast to it. It is, to me, a fragrance that conjures a thread of being suggestive and elusive while also being vibrant and unknowing. It is a very quintessential romantic fragrance for me and it is one that I love to wear in the four seasons of Michigan's weather and it never goes in a bad direction. This is a fragrance that I get plenty of compliments with in the surroundings and settings that I wear it in and it is always one that brings me in a good mood. Now as you guys know I love to give you warm and shining examples of what these fragrances conjure for me and what kind of environment I like to wear them in and this particular fragrance is one that puts me into a lavish, gilded, almost exquisite and brilliantly um, beautiful Roman cathedral with intense perfume opening of a top note of bergamot, divana, and elemi. And those three accords that come in from the top notes of what Zerzhov did, it conjures a long weekend of just fine wine, rich fruits, and a, that beautiful, beautiful divana accord is one of the most opulent scents that I've ever smelled in my fragrance journey. The opening for this is one that captures me every single time I wear it. There is also, in this particular fragrance, the spices that they put in, they really, really did a great job with this fragrance with no holds barred at all. Um, to be in a sub collection that ranges for them in their um, 100 ml bottles at just at $200, it is one that I am amazed they are putting on the market at this price, at this point in time, because the fragrances coming behind it don't even compare. They don't even pale in comparison. This is one, as I said, cardamom, cinnamon, they run concurrent with a, a evoking of a, uh, a fine cuisine. It, if you're in a honeymoon in Italy, uh, in the Roman cathedrals, just the whole gildedness of Rome is inside of this fragrance. This is one that is, it's a beautiful, well-spiced love affair. It, it is a heart of iris and carnation that constitute a beauty that is almost unspeakable for a fragrance. It forms like a, almost a provocative and perpetual sensuality of like, when you smell it, it's like a lover's kiss, man. This is, to me, this fragrance can, be, can just never be understated. It is the remembrance that when you have on Zafiro, it is not only the concurrent running spices and florals, but you have this rich amber base with that smoky, just almost spiritual incense accord. This it's also endowed with a sweetness that is from a pervasive honey accord, which makes this a very sensual fragrance as well. It creates a very, almost a hypnotic, exotic, and sexy fragrance for anyone who wears it. This is one that is unisex. 
it leans masculine to me and my nose and what I've been through in my journey, but I think a woman can pull this off in cool weather. A man, four seasons nonstop. Cool weather, lady can pull this off, wear it with confidence and be beautiful with it on. Next, guys, let's get into the cigar memoir. We're going to talk about one of my uh, new daily driver cigars, the CAO Pilon. It's a cigar that's been out for many years now. I've smoked it for many years, and to me, it is a cigar that comes in under $7 in my community, and one that if I choose to smoke on a daily basis, it's one that I can go to, have a great cigar experience, and in the way they blended this particular cigar, it gives different taste profiles almost every time I smoke one, which can be a nuisance for some people, but for me and my taste palette, when I know I'm going toward the cigar, I know where it's going to go in the arena, but I don't know where it's going to go in the fight, if you get what I'm saying. So this is the CAO Pilon. It is a Ecuador Habano wrapper, a Nicaragu Nicaraguan binder, and a Nicaraguan Dominican filler combination. It is a medium body cigar. It has taste profiles of pepper, spices, cacao, cedar, and mixed nuts to my nose with a slight touch of leather. And as I said, this is my favorite Vitola. This is the Robusto Extra, and it comes in at under $7, sometimes $7.5 in my community. And so for cold draw appearance, when you see this particular cigar, the band is about a one and a half inch band. It has a story to tell, and it shows the actual pilon that they are using as the fermentation process for this particular cigar. A very neat band, a chocolate-hued cigar with uh, visible veins but no visible seams seems very well constructed this is three of the, one of the three cigars that I purchased to smoke it is slightly spongy as the rest were um, as I said a medium chocolate milk chocolate shade um, a very distinguished band uh, the foot of the cigar it has me thinking of cacao and chocolate nibs, a bit of wood, oak, cedar, almost like you stepped out of a wood shop. If you are woodworkers, anybody who's been in a wood shop, you get that scent profile uh, to the utmost. The most unique factor on this particular cigar, to me, was like a fermented grape that I got from it. I don't know where it's coming from. I didn't have any wine that day to give me an enhancer wine taste or smell so to me when I smoked the two previous of them one had a great nuance to it that was terrific the cold draw on these particular cigars that experience for me was one that was complemented by the same chocolate notes and chocolate nibs but had a dry tobacco taste uh, a faint hint of woodiness with a just a touch of sweet dried fruits and red green peppers. That kind of gave me the summation of what the cold draw was and what I can expect in the cigar for the first through the final third. So in the cigars that I had in this particular um, time, which was smoked in the last three weeks, um, I got complex flavors, a great balance from each cigar. Um, the actual cigar gave me profiles of pepper, wood, a nice touch of earthiness, um, a cacao, a powder cacao. If you ever had like um, Hershey's powdered milk or a powder substance you make milk with for the kids, it gave me that essence in my nose. And it was one of the best chocolate cacao notes that I've had in a long time. Um, I hope that makes sense to your palate uh, coming off and trying to give you these, these examples of what I get and smell and how to give and take nuances off a cigar. Um, this is one that was very enjoyable in the first third. It had peppery punch. Uh, the burn line was very sharp. The construction was great in these particular cigars. Um, the smoke was somewhat pedestrian. It didn't come off enveloping my entire uh, mouth. So the body was mild to medium, kind of light in the body. Um, each puff gave me a nice waning but passing white peppercorn flavor to it in the first third, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And that is... Um, what I had come to expect in each cigar, but like I said, in that one of the cigars that gave me a great profile, and that came in the first third of that particular cigar. Well, 
in the second third of the cigar, after making this debut uh, via a retro hail, the black pepper started to come in and move down my palate. It kicked in. It never. When I talk about the the body of a cigar, for me, I want to feel and taste the profile in my cheekbones. I want to taste it in the front sides and middle of my tongue. And in the retro hell, I want to get the essence of what the smoke is giving me in its real essence and real smell. So for me, on the retro hell for this particular cigar, the pepper kicked up. The cigar, it didn't lack in any engagement of that black pepper throughout the entire second third. So in that pylon, it had a nice pepper kick in the way they fermented that pylon. This one here, uh, in the second third, it had touches of sweetness that lingered around while the pepper, it did wane in its intensity, it never left, which I enjoyed about that particular part of the cigar. The strength and the flavor steps up in its approach in the second third um, by that mediation of how that pepper would wane and wax. To me, it was a sweetness that comes off with that Ecuadorian Habana wrapper to take center stage. Yeah. It's a flavor profile that is, to me, sometimes immediately re recognizable, but sometimes it does have its own profiles with different cigars and the way they blend it. Um, the, in this second third, also, the burn line was extremely razor sharp in both cigars. Um, the smoke did start to thicken in the second third, and the production increased a bit of the combustion. Uh, so in my mouth, the flavors start to intensify, which in the second third is always expected and always pleasant for me if it goes as intense as this did. So this cigar for me from first to second third was an example of a cigar that was well blended to introduce you to the flavor profiles as Cool Smoke came in and once the second third came on, it ramped up in all of its profiles, the nuttiness, the cacao, a slight leathery touch, nice black pepper, white peppercorns, green and red peppers were all popping in this particular cigar and its flavor profile in the middle of that second third. And so in getting to the, the crux of what it is to go into this final third of the cigar, um, it was only a matter of about five or six puffs before the final third starts to claim as the boldest position in smoking the CAO pylon. Um, to me, it was relatively tame in the first and second third when it came to the final third. This cigar ramped up levels unspeakable for a cigar with this particular blending profile for me um, in both cigars. So it wasn't just one cigar gave me a lot of intensity and strength. It was both cigars came off with the same amount of intensity that ramped up throughout. I don't know if they came from the same profile box or what, because I bought them in different days. Um, but to me, I got charred oak in the final third, a nice pungent and aromatic earthiness that smelled like fermented hay. That was coming off very well. Nicely done raising the cord. It gave me a nice hint of dried fruit. The pepper was still there. I even got a hint of what a, a moist patchouli smell, which was fantastic on this. I didn't even expect that to come from this particular cigar. That's a note that I would get some, from cigars that are in the $18 to $20 range. And for a $7 cigar, this thing was pouring on flavor after flavor, building boldly and giving me nice body. And I love that about this particular cigar. That's why I call it my new daily driver. Um, the final third, uh, as I call it a wrap with about one inch left on the cigar, it gave me one of the most pleasant smoking experiences I've had of this season. Uh, I can't wait to smoke more of CAO cigars. I had left this brand on the shelf for a while, but I picked up a few this week, uh, including the Fathead, which I'll be reviewing very soon. But to me, as it stands, the Pylon, is a new daily driver for me a great cigar with heavy heavy body throughout the building of the cigar in its first and final thirds it is one that smoked with fine razor sharp lines great combustion body and complexity were great mild strength a beautiful cigar waiting for me to be smoked on a daily basis i fell in love with this cigar um, that's my final assertion and assessment of the seattle pylon in 2022 great cigar for the price Great cigar at a three dollar premium on the price would be fine for me for this particular blend that I smoked. Um, if you guys have any experience with the CAO pylon and how it smoked well for you or even bad for you, let me know because this one for me came out as a great surprise. I love the cigar. Um, 
And like I said, that's my final assessment for today, guys. Zafiro from Zerzhov is a great incense fragrance that goes over four seasons. Excuse me. Very romantic, very sexy fragrance that's also a conjures of spirituality. It gives you a nice um, grounding effect while also giving you an assertive and alluring presence to yourself. The aura is great around that fragrance, and I'm sure whoever wears it around you or in area with you, they're having a pleasant experience, and it can be attractive and suggestive in the way that it pulls people in. Also, the CAO Pylon, great daily, daily driver cigar. Get you guys hands on that for under $8, $7 sometimes. This is not a cigar that you should step over and beyond. Also, as you guys know, this is my um, 38th video, I believe, so I'm getting great support from you guys. I love what you guys are giving me a feedback. Thanks for the support. As always, if you found anything entertaining or educational in these particular videos, drop me a like, comment, question below. Let, let, tell a friend that this channel is here to stay, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. And as always, stay blessed.